Today we're going to learn a lot of stuff that, if understood properly, will turn your brain into a mixed up pile of goo that will run out your ears. Okay? So we're going to begin it with this thing. This is a demonstration of something called the photoelectric effect. Now the photoelectric effect is <coughs> uh, comes from the prefix is photo, which means, anyone know what photo means? Light. light. Good. Photo means light and electric means Electric, good, <laughs> means electric. So f light electric, so how do you get electricity out of light? That is what the photoelectric effect is. So we have a little demonstration here uh, that kind of demonstrates the photoelectric effect. Up here we have a lamp. We can uh, turn the lamp on or off uh, by sliding this bar. Um, and currently we're not seeing anything. We can turn this on and off. There we go. So we can turn the light on and off by sliding this bar. We can also change uh, how bright it is, the intensity. Also, we can change what kind of light we're going to shine, whether it's going to be infrared, red, Roy G. Biv, ultraviolet, whatever we want to shine. So the photoelectric effect is simply this. If you shine a light on a piece of metal, sometimes that metal will kick out electrons, but it's not going to do it until I hit play, silly me. Sometimes it will hit, uh, kick out electrons, and you see electrons flying across there, and down here you can see a current reading that shows you that electrons are f in fact flying across. Okay? So that's what the photoelectric effect is, and this is how a solar calculator works. It's light hits the solar calculator little wafer in there, and causes an electric current to flow and that's how it gets calc how uh, it gets its power. And there are many applications for this including solar panels. Um, hopefully someday we could stop you know burning coal and oil and just let the sun give us all of its energy in this way. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about uh, we are talking about that but we're not really concerned with the energy applications at the moment. What we want to know is how the process works. For Many, 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 many years, this entire process of how does this photoelectric effect work uh, baffled scientists. And let me explain to you why it baffled them. So we have light coming out of the lamp, and the light, if you think of light as a form of a wave, woo, oops, that should have been a yellow, but oh well, I didn't have a yellow marker. So uh, that wave is hitting this little piece of metal here. This is sodium metal in this case. We can change it to other things, but that's not really relevant right now to us. And that light should kick off these electrons, and those electrons flow across and give us our power. So that's how, how it basically works. And so if you'll notice right now, if I, uh, you notice how many electrons are coming out of it right now? None. Uh, is that because I don't have the light bright enough? Look, my light is all the way up. It's at 100% intensity. Why won't light, why, why won't it come out? We don't really know why, and scientists didn't know why for many, 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 many years. <coughs> um, but we can make light come out this way. We can actually, no matter what the intensity, if we, instead of, for instance, shining yellow light at it, if we shine even something like uh, purple light at it, even at a very low intensity. You see, I, my intensity is only about 34% right now, uh, but I'm getting lots and 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 lots of electrons flowing out of it. And that doesn't make sense if you think about light the way we've been talking about it, because on the one hand, you say, well, yes, violet light is higher energy than yellow, so it makes sense. But on the other hand, if you make it super, super intense, if you take yellow light or blue light and make it super intense, in fact, we could even take something like green light, which, or, let's see, let me find the lowest one that doesn't work. There's green light. Uh, it does work. So let's keep going down, go back to yellow again. Here's yellow light. Super intense. 100% intensity on yellow light is not causing any electrons to come out. But if I nudge it just a tiny little bit further, just a tiny bit more energy, and make it just green, now it starts coming out. 
In fact, even if I keep turning the intensity down low, they still keep coming out, don't they? Now, this doesn't make sense because the total energy from a whole bunch of yellow ones is actually more energy than just a few green ones. So even though there's less energy here, it's working better with the green. And this baffled scientists. It made no sense at all. And so they were kind of stuck on this. It was the photo, it's again, it's called the photoelectric effect. And no one understood the electric effect. And this was completely baffling scientists for a long time until someone came and f figured it out and explained it to everyone. Does anyone have any guess who did that? I'll give you a hint. You've No, it was not Isaac Newton. That's a reasonable guess. He was... Uh, this happened in the early 1900s. Isaac Newton would have been long before that in the 1600s, so uh, two or three hundred years later. So this is actually a guy, you, you know him by his name, Einstein. Einstein figured this out. In fact, Einstein, you know that Einstein was smart. You know he did a lot of in interesting, important things. But what you may not know is, of all the interesting, important things he did, the only thing he ever won a Nobel Prize for was this, explaining the photoelectric effect. And you will see by the end of the lecture, hopefully, why his explanation of the photoelectric effect won him the Nobel Prize. It's because his explanation is totally, totally weird, and it's not going to seem that weird at first to you, but as we go through, you will, uh, maybe as we watch the what will end up being the second video on here, will make a lot more sense why it's so weird to you. I'm going to show you what he did. I'm going to go up to options and I'm going to hit show photons. And so now it's actually going to show each photon coming out. <coughs> and so and then I'll kind of do that. What Einstein said is, remember that, uh, so let's visualize these light particles as photons, as little particles. Before, we were visualizing them as a wave. And so their total energy was just whatever that those waves' energies added up to whenever you figured in the intensity. What Einstein did was he said, let's just view them as individual particles, not as waves. Let's just kind of visualize each photon. And uh, so what we're going to do is, and this visualization doesn't really show it, uh, let's imagine that an electron is like a billiard ball. You know what a billiard ball is? Pool, like a ball on a pool table. So you have an electron is like a billiard ball, so you've got a billiard ball sitting here. And the photons are other kinds of balls that you're shooting at the billiard ball, and you're trying to make the billiard ball fly across. Okay? So you're basically hitting it, knocking it off, like a pool ball hitting another pool ball. So, Let's try a red photon. A red photon is like a little pebble or a, or a, uh, maybe it's like a ping pong ball. Are you familiar with ping pong? Yes. yes. Ping pong ball, table tennis ball. If I throw a thousand ping pong balls at a billiard ball, are they ever going to knock it off? They're not going, it's not going to work. There's just not enough energy in a ping pong ball. If it hits it, it's just going to bounce off and the billiard ball is going to stay in place, right? But what if I throw something with more energy like a billiard ball at a billiard ball? Is it going to come? The billiard ball is going to move. What if I throw a bowling ball <laughs> at a billiard ball? It's going to move, right? And so this sort of explains what we're seeing here. We're seeing that if you think of these light particles as individual photons with higher energy and lower energy, then you can <coughs> begin to understand a little bit about why the photo effect, photoelectric effect works the way it does. Because uh, the low energy photons are like little tiny light balls, and the higher energy photons are like these big heavy balls, and so it all works exactly like you would expect it if you visualize it that way. And so we can, it doesn't matter how few bowling balls I throw, it doesn't matter how many 
how few bowling balls I throw, it's always going to knock some pool balls off, right? So there we go. We have uh, very low intensity bowling balls shooting the billiard balls off. But if we go back to ping pong balls, no matter how many we throw, nothing happens. Does that make sense? So that is Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect. And so what we're going to see next is why that is weird. We'll continue that on the next video.